by the end of this video, when we walk inside our buildings, we'll now have a nice fade to black and fade back out, so our game feels smoother and more polished. We'll pause our player's movement as he walks between transitions and have it fully customizable so you can use this in any of your games. Cool, let's check it out. So first of all, we'll want a nice black box to be able to transition to. I'm gonna go to my UI canvas, which in my hierarchy is just called UI. I'll rename this to be UI canvas. So when I say I'm going to my canvas, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't done our previous tutorials, here are my canvas settings. My render mode is screen space overlay and our scale mode is scale with screen size which I set to reference our target reference down here in our game. So cool, back in the hierarchy, if I open up our UI canvas, you can see we've got all our UI objects. On our UI canvas, I'm gonna right click and go UI panel, and I'll name this fade panel, as this is what we're gonna be fading to for our transition. On the image, we can set this color to be black, and as it's semi-transparent right now, we can go to the alpha, which is the A down here, drag this all the way, so it's fully opaque. Now to target this alpha easier for it to fade in and out, instead of doing it through the image, we're gonna scroll down and add a new component called a canvas group. On here, we're gonna untick block ray casts. So this panel doesn't block any of our UI. And on here, you can see there's an alpha option. This is the one we're gonna to use to go between one for fully opaque and zero for fully transparent. Cool, that's the UI set up. We can now get the script ready. So on our UI canvas, I collapse these. Since this is another script that handles UI controls, I'm gonna add our script on here and go new script, screen, fader. We can double click on this to open up. And in here, we don't need our start or update, so we can remove those. And first of all, at the top, I'm gonna to add a public static screen fader instance, which by making this static means we'll be able to call this script from any other script without passing it in by making it an instance. We can set this instance up quickly inside an awake by going if instance equals null, instance equals this, else destroy game object. This just makes sure we only have one screen fader in our game so the instances don't get confused. Cool, next back up the top, we'll want a serialized field to make this accessible in our inspector of our canvas group, which we'll call canvas group and a serialized field for our float fade duration, which we'll set to equal 0.5F. The F makes this a float, so we can use decimals for our transition. Cool, now we're gonna need an async task called fade, and we'll pass in a float called target transparency. To get rid of these red underlines, hover over task, show potential fixes, and use system threading tasks. The reason this is gonna be asynchronous as we're going to wait for our screen to slowly fade from black to transparent and transparent to black. So first let's create a float named start to equal our canvas group dot alpha comma to create another float t equals zero. t just stands for time. Now we'll go while t is less than fade duration t plus equals time dot delta time then canvas group dot alpha equals math f dot lerp and if you haven't used lerp before as you can see here this will interlope between a and b by t which you'll see A will be our start, B will be our target transparency, and T will be our T divided by fade duration. We'll set this to await task.yield, which will simply just give our program a bit of time to fade to this target transparency. And at the very end, just to make sure that the alpha does set to what we want, we'll set alpha to equal target transparency. These two little lines are just backups to make sure this works smoothly. Now to keep the logic all inside the screen fader, let's create a public async task for our fade out, where we'll await fade and pass in one to set our target transparency to be opaque, which means it'll fade to black. Then we can copy this function, paste it down below, call this one fade in, as we're fading back into our game, and set this to be zero to fade to transparent. If these names are confusing, you can name them whatever you want, fade to black or fade to transparent. That's what I had it before. I switched it back to fade out and fade in as it made sense in my head. But cool, for now, this is all we're gonna need to get a fade in and out working. I'm gonna add a bit more later on to fix a little bug in our game, but I'll show you that in a bit. So back in Unity, on our UI canvas, we're gonna need to pass in our canvas group, which is on our fade panel. So let's drag the fade panel into our canvas group. And for our fade duration, we'll leave this at 0.5. Now we're gonna to need to call this fade when we want it to fade in and out. As you know, we want that to happen when we go inside our building, which happens for me inside my map bounds, inside T1, I can check one of my waypoints. So when I hit this waypoint, I want it to fade so I can transition to the next map. That happens in our script, map transition. So I'm gonna double click on map transition to open it up. 
Inside our script, when we hit this waypoint on the onTrigger Enter2D, we update our map boundary and update our player position. Below this onTrigger Enter2D, we can write a new function of an async void fade transition. And we'll pass in the game object of our player. So we can do all our transitioning inside this new function. I'm going to grab where we update our bounding shape and our update player position. I'll cut this from this section of our script and paste it down in our fade transition. For update player position, let's pass in our player. So now we can wrap around this updating with our await screen fader dot instance dot fade out, which will fade us out to black. Then once these have updated, we can await screen fader dot instance dot fade in. Cool, so up where we had this before in our on trigger enter 2D, we can call fade transition and pass in our collision dot game object. Since we've checked that that's our player and we need our player game object in here. So cool, let's go back to Unity and test this out. When I walk on over to our building and walk inside, we can see it fades to black and we enter back in. If I walk out, it does the same fades to black and comes back. It goes a bit fast, so I'll set our fade duration to be one. So it goes a bit slower and we can test this out. We walk on over, walk in, nice slow fade and we transition over. Now I talked about this in the previous video, but you can see as we walk in, the screen kind of wobbles and snaps to our player doesn't look smooth. I was so confused about this trying to figure it out, but luckily I figured it out and you get to see the answer instantly. This might be happening for you, might not, but for me it's because on our Cinemachine camera, on the body, we use dampening on our X, Y, and Z by one. So as our player gets teleported, our camera is a bit slow to catch up because we have dampening on, so it doesn't instantly lock to our player. It drags over and looks a bit weird. To fix this, I'm going to go back to our UI canvas and open up our screen fader script. And in here, I'm going to need a serialized field to pass in our Cinemachine virtual camera, which I'll need to hover over, show potential fixes, and using Cinemachine. I'll call this our VCam because it's a virtual camera. And then down below, we can have some private fields. One for our Cinemachine framing transposer, which I'll just call transposer. And one of our vector free original dampening. Damping. <laughs> In our await, we can set our transposer to equal our vcam dot get cinemachine component and pass in the Cinemachine framing transposer. And in our original dampening, we can set this to be a new vector free, pass in our transposer dot m underscore x dampening comma, I'm just going to copy and paste this so it's easy, but it's our transposer for our Y dampening and comma transposer dot Z dampening. Cool. So now down the bottom, I'm going to write a new function of avoid set dampening or damping. And we'll want to pass in a vector free, which I'll just call D for dampening. We'll check if we don't have a transposer. So explanation mark transposer will return so this doesn't break in case you don't use a transposer and haven't passed one in. The script will still work. Then we'll set our transposer x dampening to equal d dot x. And now I'm going to press control d twice to duplicate these and go down and set the y to equal y and the z to equal z. Cool, cool. Now to use this in our fade out function where we're fading to black, I'm going to set the dampening to be vector free dot zero to turn off the dampening of our camera. That way, when we move our player, our camera will immediately snap to our player. And as you might have guessed, in our fade in, we want to set dampening back to our original dampening. Very cool. Let's test this out in Unity. So we've got our VCam that we need to drag in. Let's drag our Cinemachine camera into this VCam slot. Now we can press play and test this. Let's walk on over, walk inside, and we immediately appear. We don't have that weird draggy across the screen. Let's try it outside. There we go. Very nice. Now there's one more problem I want to show you. When we walk on inside, if I hold down forwards, we keep walking. So as you can see, our player can move around even past when I'm exiting the building. He just walks off into the darkness there. Ah. So while we're transitioning, let's pause our player so he can't move. This will also be handy so our player can't move when we open our inventory up or when we talk to our NPCs. So let's go to our player and go to player movement. And on our player movement script, I'll double click on this and to get him to stop moving. While we're paused, we'll go if pause controller dot is game paused. Then we'll check if our RB dot velocity does not equal vector two dot zero. So he is still moving, but we'll set his RB velocity to equals vector two dot zero to stop him from physically moving. And as you can see in our move function down here, when our context is canceled, so when we do stop moving, 
we need to stop our animations. We can copy these out to a new function of avoid stop movement animations and paste in these. So we can replace this now down in our move and we can also call this up where our game is paused. I'm actually going to move this function down below because that's tidier in my brain. Then outside of this check for if we're moving or not, we can just call return as we don't want to continue and start moving again. So cool, this should pause our player now. Let's go back to Unity and test. When I open my inventory, okay, you can't tell, but I can't move. <laughs> if I talk to my NPC, I can't move him. So cool, our player pausing is working. So now we need to pause while we're fading. I'm gonna do this in our map transition script. So back in our script inside fade transition, at the very top, we can go pause controller dot set pause to be true. And then at the bottom, once we're done fading, we can set pause to be false. Very cool, very easy. Let's go test this out. Cool, so now when we walk on inside our building, I'm gonna hold down forwards, it waits, and then we can walk. Let's go outside, I'll hold down down, it waits, and now we can move. Because our fade duration is one second, it looks a little slow and laggy. So I'll go back to our canvas and set the fade duration back to 0 0.5, press play to test this again. Otherwise it looks like my game's breaking a bit, but let's walk on inside. Yay, what a nice smooth transition. We have it so it pauses our NPC movement. Of course you can customize this however you want by editing our scripts to fit the game and feel that you like. But cool, we now have a nice fade between any of our transitions. To grab every single script I've ever made, you can go check out our Patreon to get absolutely everything. Or to get this whole project for yourself, you can check out this template which includes all finished features and you'll get all future updates for free. So check it out. If not, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!